All right, so you've already started diving into the world of containers. You know about Docker's, building Docker images, and you're able to run those containers. But somebody just told you, you also need to know about Kubernetes. Docker alone is not enough. Now you might be wondering, what the hell is Kubernetes and why should I care about it? And that's what I'm gonna to explain to you in this video. Now to understand what Kubernetes is or container orchestration is, let's compare it with something that we already know about. Let's say you're packaging your application into a virtual machine and you're able to do that and run it uh, on your local laptop. Now, when you want to actually deploy that application in a live environment, you're not gonna run it on your laptop, you need an environment to run your virtual instances or virtual machines. So what you typically do, either you go to a VPS hosting provider or nowadays we mostly prefer using a cloud provider such as AWS or GCP or Microsoft Azure Cloud. Now what cloud does or what cloud really is, is a way to run those virtual machines in a managed way. So we don't have to worry about the capacity planning, we don't have to you know, worry about the scale, the cloud automatically does most of that for you. So you take the VM image, uh, convert it into the format that the cloud provider understands, and it's the cloud which does the orchestration of your infrastructure right from provisioning it, scaling it, managing it and deciding which underlying physical servers it really runs on. So all of these orchestration features come with the cloud provider. And sometimes you also provision, you may have your own uh, physical servers, but you still, the private cloud such as OpenStack because it gives you the features that the these, you know, these cloud providers give you, mainly the automation and uh, automated provisioning and management and orchestration of your infrastructure, right? Now, coming back to Docker, once you decide to move from the virtual machines to Docker's containers, you generally start building the containers. And when you do that, you're running it on generally a local machine, local environment, maybe your laptop or a local server that uh, you're connected and running it on. Now, that's great for local development, but when you want to take those containers and run it at scale on maybe, you know, you're not going to run one container because you'll have an application stack and you might want to run it at scale. So you may have like, let's say, 100 servers, 100 physical servers, and on top of that, you may want to run thousands of containers day in and day out, right? That's quite a realistic scenario. Now, in that situation, you're not, you don't want to go and track the utilization and availability and resource availability and monitor all of that for each of the physical servers that you have. And every time you want to launch the new batch of containers, you don't want to make that decision yourself because that will be too much of work and too much manual intervention, a lot of delays. So you want a system which takes your physical servers and create a pool of that so that instead of thinking about like 100 machines, you're now talking to only one interface, only one system, and that's your container orchestration engine. So the first thing that a container orchestration engine does, such as Kubernetes, and that's what Kubernetes really is, is takes your physical servers and create one single pool of that. And underlying to that, you may have 100 hosts, or tomorrow you may just add a couple of 100 hosts, and uh, it just gives you one interface to talk to. So you're talking, instead of talking to those 100 servers, you're now talking to one single interface and that's the, generally the API server, right? And that's what Kubernetes does, the clustering, right? And abstraction. But the second thing that it does is, you know, takes care of the orchestration and the scheduling part. Scheduling as in, when you submit a batch of containers to run, it automatically decides on its own where the servers have the right amount of resources and what is the ideal algorithm. So it has its own built-in bin packing algorithm to optimize the resource utilization for your underlying servers and uh, get the best out of your hardware resources. So all of that is completely automated decision based on Kubernetes or internal algorithms. So uh, clustering, scheduling are the two main important uh, roles of an orchestrator and that's why you need an orchestration engine. So beyond the development that you do locally, whenever you want to take those containers and run it in production or production-like environments, the fundamental thing that you need is a container orchestration and that's where this comes in. And um, along with this, it also gives you a lot of interesting features 
uh, which you know which were only possible in some of the cloud providers one of the examples is auto scaling so it can automatically help you scale uh, as your load goes up and down so when the load goes up uh, you're running let's say two containers here here we are running four here we're running six here we're running eight here we're running ten so that automatic horizontal scaling of your resources is all a built-in feature of uh, Kubernetes uh, infrastructure. Along with that, it also gives the fault tolerance. So one of the server goes down, you don't have to worry about it because Kubernetes continuously monitors it and whenever it detects a, you know, detects a downtime of a node, it will take the containers from there and schedule it somewhere else. So all of those features uh, are quite useful and it actually helps you to create some sort of a very similar to a pass uh, environment uh, in your data center as well, or you can do that on the cloud. Um, a lot of a very common example is you take Kubernetes and run it on a cloud platform. There are managed uh, Kubernetes um, services such as Google Container Engine or Azure um, Containers or AWS is also coming up with a new um, container management infrastructure or a feature as well, right? And that's what Kubernetes is. So in this video, I just talked about why do you need a container orchestration engine and what kind of features that it provides. If you like or dislike our video, do share your feedback. If you'd like, if you'd like to learn more about Kubernetes, you can sign up to our free course in the middle. And if you would like to learn in details about how to use Kubernetes uh, using a project-based example, uh, we do have a detailed course for that as well. And we are, you can find a link with a special offer to sign up to that course.